Hello everyone. So welcome to my lecture today. So I think you can hear me well. So today's topic is effective technical presentation for civil engineers. And this is because we have to understand what is effective technical presentation for civil engineers because in your future you have to give a lot of presentation in English and there are some differences between the effective presentation and oral presentation so I will focus those topics how to give the effective presentation and what is the way or method so what is skills you can develop to give the effective presentation. So let's start from the beginning. Mm -hmm. So today's lecture, I mainly focus uh, like what is oral presentation and like what is the overview of an oral presentation or effective presentation. And then I focus what is the effective presentation particularly. And after that, we'll see 10 general rules for effective presentation. So these rules are very important to follow. If you want to give an effective presentation, you have to follow these rules. Otherwise, it will not be an effective presentation. And then we will see the structure of an effective presentation and what will be the language during the presentation, what will be the body language during the presentation, and how do you interact with the audience during online, online presentation. So we will learn some very, very important topics today, which will be very much useful for all of you during your study time at Yamaguchi University or if you go to master's or PhD. And also it will be helpful for your job when you go to uh, work as civil engineer and you work as international or global civil engineers. So you have to communicate with other people through this effective presentation. So we must learn what is the correct way of effective presentation. So let's see what is oral presentation. In the first lecture, I told you that there are four basic skills for communications, effective communications as engineer. One is listening. Number two is speaking. Number three is reading. And number four is writing. So to communicate with the people by delivering speech or by speaking, it is called the oral presentation. So I repeat it again, to communicate with the people by delivering a speech, okay? So what you will deliver? What you'll say? So it is the way to share your ideas or research, your thinking, your thoughts with other people. So what are you thinking? What are you doing? What did you get in your research? So you have to share this information. You have to communicate this with other people and this oral presentation is one of the best way to do that. So when you go to uh, like your graduation thesis writing and you have to give some presentation for graduation. So one year research and then give the presentation. So you have to summarize all of your works for one year. So within like eight minutes or 10 minutes. So when you go to master's or when you go to graduate school, PhD, for example, so every time you have to show your research progress to your 
teacher to your supervisor. So by doing this presentation. So it means that what you are thinking, what you have uh, got so far from your research, you will share this information with your other people, other researchers, other engineers. This is up to the university level, but as a civil engineer, especially global civil engineer, you have to interact. You have to uh, work together with the international engineers, international people. So at the time, you have to check whether um, they can understand properly or not. Sometimes it is a little bit difficult to, because different people have different pronunciation. But if you make like slide plus presentation, it is much easy to understand even your pronunciation or your English is uh, not uh, enough to understand for other people, but certainly it would help. So the oral presentation is the way of communication. Okay, please remember oral presentation is the way of communication and this part mainly focus on speaking communication. So you talk with other people and if they ask you a question, you will reply that about your works, about your research, about your ideas, what are you thinking? So this is one part of communications. So please remember, oral presentation is nothing but to share your ideas your research, your thinkings with other people by speaking. One of the good example of oral presentation is that right now I am talking to you, okay? So this is one kind of oral presentation. So I am speaking, I'm trying to communicate with all of you with this presentation. So this is kind of oral presentation because here I am not writing anything to communicate. Here I am not just reading. I just want to share my ideas, share my thoughts, share my um, like understanding with all of you through this presentation or lectures. So this is kind of oral presentation. So oral means something with related to mouth or speaking in general. So I am communicating with you with the speaking way. Okay, that is the main point. Please remember what is oral presentation. Now let's see. So I already informed you that the, among the four basic communication skills, speaking is in number two and oral presentation or effective presentation for civil engineers is kind of speaking communication skill. So you have to improve this skill to make it more uh, like effective or more perfect to communicate with other people. Now let's see what is effective presentation. I focused more on effective presentation because this is the best way of oral presentation, okay? This is the best way or effective, you can understand what is effective, what is the meaning of effective, right? So it means more perfect, okay? Appropriate way for presentation. So effective presentation is the oral presentation, which is combined combination of both, number one, intellectual or logical, and number two, emotional. Okay, please remember, effective presentation is the oral presentation, which is the combination of both intellectual and emotional. So intellectual part or logical part and also the emotional part has two different things in effective presentation. So it means that the intellectual part, a logical part means when you give presentation, 
what will be the order of the presentation? Which thing will you say first? Which thing will you say second? Which thing you will speak at third? So this is called intellectual part. So at least you have to make a good story, okay? So which thing you'll say first, then second, then third, then fourth. So this is the logical steps for good presentation or effective presentation. And if you want to have this effective presentation of your presentation, then you must follow this intellectual or logical part. Okay, I repeat it again. If you want to perfectly do this logical part, then you have to think a lot. Okay, so which thing I will say first, which thing I will say second, to, to make a good storytelling. So storytelling on your research presentation, on your uh, like work presentation, this is very important. So if you do not follow these rules, it will not be effective presentation. So it will not be logical anymore. And number two is emotional part. Emotional part of the presentation is something which is related to your emotional, okay? Emotional is from your heart, okay? Like what will be the voice quality? What will be the voice tone during the presentation? What will be your body language, your gesture, your posture, your eye contact? So these things are related to emotional part. So to make an effective presentation, you must both have these two parts. One is intellectual part, another one is emotional part. So please remember this one, intellectual part or logical part is as important as the emotional part. Because when you give a presentation, so your main objective is that the people who are listening to you, they will listen it very carefully, okay? Or they will, um, find, they will find some interest. What are you talking about? Let's look at the slides, let's look at this. So just they get become more interested about your presentation. That is a very, very important. And there are a lot of research actually, how to give intellect, um, effective presentation. And it is seen that without the emotional part of the presenters, it, is, it will never be an effective presentation. So emotional part is as important as the logical part. So please remember this one. We must take care of this as well. So I repeat it again. Effective presentation is the combination of both intellectual or logical part and also the emotional part. So both of them are very much important for an effective presentation. Then let's see the 10 general rules for an effective presentation. So I hope all of you will remember <clears throat> by taking memo of this or by taking like screenshot of this. But what I wanted you, all of you must learn the 10 basic or most important rules for effective presentation. 
So what is that? Number one, keep the number of slides as small as possible. This is very important. Whenever you go to give some presentation, whether it is for graduation or for job or for other research uh, collaboration or something, most of the time you have some fixed times to give your presentation. For example, when you graduate after four years, you have to give one presentation that is around eight minutes. Okay, so in eight minutes time, you have to summarize all of your research of one year. So be prepared for that. And how to do that? Like keep the number of slides as small as possible. So make it compact, okay? For example, for 10 minutes presentation, you can make like 10 slides to 15 slides maximum not 20, not 25, not 30, absurd. So people cannot understand anything if you make a lot of slides because you have to do very fast at that time. So what you have to do, you have to keep the number of slides as small as possible, okay? So it means your presentation will be much compact, not so much information, not so much slides, not, not so much um, like pictures or photos, graphs or data or tables. So you have to make balance, which is the most important things. You will just put it on the slide. You do not need to write many, many things, many, many text, for example. So this is number one. What is that? Keep your slide as small as possible. It means compact your number of slides. So in one, of course, you have to put the information, but put it in the right way. Then number two, do not write a lot of text on a slide. This is important. A slide should never have more than six words on a line and never more than eight lines. So please remember this one or write it on your note. So never write too many text in one slide. Okay, this is very bad. It will never be an effective presentation if you do that. Okay, so be careful. A slide should never have more than six, six words on a line and never more than eight lines, okay? It means a slide should never have more than six words on a line and never more than eight lines. So try to maintain this one. So if you write eight lines maximum, here I'm writing too much, right? almost 10, 11, 12 lines, so, so that you can understand. This is not a good slide to understand or too much text, I will say. It is not so good. So when you write eight lines in one slide, it will be much easy to understand what is the in most information, uh, important information in this slide. So try to follow that. Never more than eight lines in one slide. So number three, do not write in full sentence on your slide, only keywords or phrases. So this is important, this is interesting. So effective presentation means you will speak, right? So you will speak or you will communicate with the other people through speaking. So it means that you do not need to write to your full sentence, just keywords or phrases on the slide 
and then you will discuss with your mouth, with your uh, speaking skills. So this is one of the important part of effective presentation. Do not write in full sentence on your slide, only keywords or phrases. Please remember this one. And after that, one of the most uh, important part of effective presentation is you cannot read what is on your slide or what is in your memo or what is on your note, okay? You cannot read only. This is not reading. Be careful. Presentation or effective presentation is, is speaking. That is different way of communication, not reading, okay? So if you read, what is written on the slide or what is written on your memo, what is written on your uh, notebook, it will never be a good presentation, even not even near to the effective presentation. So I made it bold to make sure that when you give presentation, do not read anything. Reading is different and effective presentation is different. The way of communication is different, okay? Totally different. That is reading. If you read something that is reading, reading communication skills or reading. But what we are talking about, this is presentation, okay? You have to present, you have to speak, you have to look at the uh, eye contact, look at the eyes of the audience who are listening to you. So this is very important. If you do not look to the people, if you look to the slide or the memo and just read, it will never be a good presentation. Never even close to the effective presentation. Be careful, number four. Do not read what is on your slide. Your job is to speak, not read. So when you are in presentation, when you are in the presentation area, giving presentation, this is your job to give presentation, not the reading. Be careful about it. Then number five, make eye contact with your audience. So this is another thing we must learn, especially during the student time. If you do not practice this one, you cannot uh, have good eye contact ability during the presentation. So normally during the presentation, we had to look at like this way. So English later like Z or Z. So you have to look in the front of the audience first, then the other side of that line. After that, you have to look at the end of that room and other side of the room so zigzag so in english this is called zigzag way so when you eye contact during presentation first you will look at the like for example in your right side right corner people in front line then left corner people eye contact then last one right corner last one left corner so something like this this is you have to practice otherwise you cannot do you'll be feeling shy to look at the eyes and eye contact is important but how long how many seconds you will you look at the people's eye that is also important so you cannot stare or you cannot look at the people for a long time okay and that is meaning will be different so 
when you give presentation, you have to eye contact, but do not stare or look at some people for a long time. So maximum you can stay for, for example, three seconds or four seconds, and then move to other people, to other people like this. So this is one good way of eye contact. I hope you understand. So I will clear the drawing. Okay, good. Then number six, prepare your presentation knowing who your audience will be. What does it mean? So when you give presentation, so your main objective is to make your presentation or materials to understand by other people. So what does it mean? So it means that the other people will listen to you and understand you properly. It means that other people will be interested about your research, about your ideas, about your thoughts. And how can I do that? To make it more understandable. The people who are listening to you will never be the same level of their knowledge. It may vary. I'll give a small example. So my research, which is related to bioelectricity generation from the living plants or by microbial fuel cell. So when I give presentation in the international conference, in front of the experts of this field, then I have to think very high level of my presentation. It means I do not need to say many fundamental things like what is microbial fuel cell or how it works or something like that. Because all the professors or the, all the researchers, all the listeners, they already know that. So I do not need to focus uh, I do not need to waste my time, valuable time on that area. On the other hand, when I give my presentation in front of high school students, I know their knowledge level is not so much. So I have to start from the very beginning, like fundamental things. What is microbial fuel cell? What is bioelectricity? And how it can uh, like, make effect to our life. So something like that. So it will be the level of the audience who are listening to your presentation. So same topic, same thing, but you have to keep on mind who will be the listeners, who will be the audience who will learn from you. So prepare your presentation knowing who your audience will be, the number six very important so it will be different based on the level of the knowledge of the people who are listening okay then number seven make sure to give handouts to your audience at the presentation so what is handouts handouts means you will make PowerPoint, PowerPoint slide, for example, for your presentation. Why not you just take a printout of it and give it distribute to the people in advance? Okay, so this is, this is called handout. So handout means you will take out the print or print out your presentation and it will share with your audience or people. Okay. And number eight, use a laser pointer, but do not move it too fast. This is important. So now I'm using on laser pointer to show which thing I'm talking about. So this is very effective way to get attention of the people. Like use a laser pointer, but do not move it too fast. So if I use it too fast, what will happen like this? It will make pain 
to your eyes, right? So some people do this unintentionally, intentionally, I don't know. During the presentation in international conference, they just make move the laser pointer too, too much. That is not good. So try to use that laser pointer, but never move it too fast, okay? Just slowly focus on the point which you want to show is that way, okay? And then number nine, do not use too many colors in on slide, okay? Nowadays, the especially students and all, I mean researchers, they try to make it more attractive by using PowerPoint. Nothing wrong about it, okay? This is perfect. And technology will make it more attractive. This is true. But if you want to make more attractive by using too many colors, that will be negative effect. That will never be good for you. So do not use too many colors in on slide, remember. So now question is that, how many colors can I use in on slide? And my answer is, you can use maximum four colors in one slide, maximum, not more than that. The less is better, like two colors is okay, three colors is okay, but not more than four colors in one slide. So try to make it some uniformity, okay? And sometimes, uh, I will suggest that you should not use you should not use the green color or the red color in your presentation because many people in the world they are uh, color blind. It means that they cannot see the color like red color or green color during the I mean, normal way of their looking. So their eyes cannot differentiate what is red, what is green. So this is very uh, sad, but there are a lot of people internationally, a lot of engineers, a lot of researchers have this problem of eye. This is the problem of eyes, okay? Their brain cannot detect the color of red and green. So. It is better to avoid this green color text or red color text, though I use here, but I suggest you, you should not use this one. Okay. And then number 10, arrive to the presentation room early to set up and be prepared to start on time. Yeah, it happens many times. I saw many people they just entered the room of their international conference session just before the time. And when they try to uh, prepare or like insert their USB to the computer for presentation, it shows that it didn't work properly or something. So their PowerPoint is not matching with the like PowerPoint, which is in, installed in the conference presentation. So this is actually very difficult, very difficult. So, because everybody has the limited time to do the presentation. If you take a lot of time, you cannot proceed to uh, in the future. So, the total time schedule will be hampered by you. So, please remember, arrive to the presentation room early to set up your presentation and prepare to start on time. And another important thing, especially when you go to the international conference, so, and you will give the presentation in like, for example, in English. So it is very normal that you'll be nervous. You'll be nervous, okay? You'll feel tense inside your heart. So to overcome this problem, you have to enter that room beforehand. You just check 
whether everything is okay or not everything is uh, perfect or not i mean how much big the room is where is the stage where you will stand and um how do you speak so if you have some idea beforehand it makes you more comfortable you will be less nervous okay so this is very important part so follow this 10 general rules for effective presentation and if you follow these 10 rules it is not so difficult to improve your presentation skills communication skills as civil engineers because international civil engineers or global civil engineers or even if you work inside japan you have to give english presentation many times of your life this is the starting point to give english presentations for your rest of the life so if you learn today how to make it how to do it how to deliver it how to make the slides of effective presentation then it will be great for all of you i promise so try to learn what i am talking about i asked you to take memo or take a screenshot or take record of these 10 points these 10 points are very very important to make a presentation effective if you do not follow this it will never be good presentation never be effective presentation so finally i repeat again the 10 general rules for perfect presentation number one keep the number of slides as small as possible and number two do not write a lot of texts on a slide a slide should never have more than six words on a line and never more than eight lines and number three do not write in full sentence on your slide only the keywords or the key phrases and number four do not read what is on your slide your job is to speak not read very very important i explained it before number four do not read do not read just keep your presentation speak number five make eye contact with your audience perfect body language okay gesture posture and eye contact this is three combination of body language gesture posture but eye contact this three makes the body language during the presentation so eye contact you have to look at the audience and posture means you have to stand still okay you cannot lean and give presentation you cannot just scratch your head and talk and just look other side and talk you cannot do that okay that's not good and gesture means when you talk you have to use your hand okay your hands your um, facial expressions these are very important and then number six prepare your presentation knowing who your audience will be so if the level of the audience is not so high, you have to make easy presentation to make it understanding for them. And if the level of the presentation audience or listening people is high, then you have to think your slide accordingly. And number seven, make sure to give handouts to your audience at your presentation. So just take out the print out of your presentation and show it give it to the listeners and use a laser pointer but do not move it too fast be careful so you can use a laser pointer this is good but you should not move it too quickly and number nine do not use too many colors in on slide so you cannot use too many color text too many color pictures or something like this 
Number 10, arrive to the presentation room early to set up and be prepared to start on time. So yeah, this is also like common sense, right? Many times you will find your USB might not work properly. The connection between the uh, PowerPoint slide projector and with your computer is not working properly. Like you have iMac, but they have Windows setup. So you have to check it beforehand and you have to prepare for that. Like, or to will happen if I cannot give presentation on time uh, because of technical faults of the computer or something like that. So you have to be careful for that. Now let's see steps of oral presentation. So oral presentation or effective presentation, you can see have basic five steps okay what is the what are those things steps number one preparing your oral presentation number two organizing the content number three delivering your presentation number four using visual aids and number five dealing with nervousness so these five things are very important for oral presentation okay preparing your oral presentation and organizing the content, then delivering your presentation. Number four is using visual aids. And number five, dealing with nervousness. I will discuss more about these points later. So first, preparing your oral presentation. What does it mean? First of all, think, okay? You have to think a lot before starting or before preparation of your presentation. For example, if I ask all of you to give a presentation about some topics in the, for example, in two weeks or so, then what you have to do, you have to think first, and what will you think? Think about what you want to achieve. What you want to achieve. Do you want to inform your audience or convince them of a particular point of view? So it happens many times when you go to work, okay? So your company has a very good technology, new technology and you want to sell that technology to the other people. So what will you do? You will try to convince them. You will try to inform them, okay, buy my technology, buy my thing. So at the time, you have to convince them, right? So you have to present in that way that I must get the job, I must get the, project, I must sell my technology to this. So you have to be in that way. It is not only just inform, okay? Inform is, you can just inform your present, uh, current status of your research or your job or something like that. And number two, think about your audience. What does it mean? I said before, like, what background knowledge do they have about your topic? Do they have any particular interest? So you have to think this one before preparing your presentation. So I said, if you give to the same presentation to the in front of um, middle school or high school students, then you have to make your slide more understandable, more comfortable for them, more interesting for them. But same topic, same research, same outcome, you want to show it to some other big firm or company, then you have to make it in that way, okay? Because they have a lot of scientists there, there are a lot of researchers there in that field, okay? So the first thing for preparing your effective presentation is that you have to think.
you have to think properly what you want to achieve, what you want to do with your presentation. And do they have any particular interest? It means that the people who are listening to you, do they want to buy your technology? Do they want to get your technology, something? So based on that, you have to prepare, you have to think. Okay, after preparation, what you'll do? Number one, brainstorm your topic and write a rough outline. Number two, research your topic. Number three, organize your material. Number four, summarize your draft. Number five, plan and prepare your visual aids. Number six, practice your presentation and get, get its length right. So now I will explain in short what is that meaning. Number one, brainstorm your topic. What is the meaning of brainstorm? Brain, our brain and storm, okay? So brainstorm is something which is meaning the you have to think a lot. You have to think a lot. So that is called brainstorm. So brainstorm your topic and write a rough outline. So you have to think properly, you have to think a lot, and then write a rough outline. Number two, research your topic. Okay, research your topic. You have to research, you have to search about your topic from internet, from Google, from library, from books, from magazines. So you have to research your topic. This is important. Number three, organize your material. After researching a lot of things, try to organize them. Which one is first, which one is second, which one is third. Make some logical, make some storytelling of your presentation. And then number four, summarize your draft. And after that, you will have to make summarize. Otherwise, you cannot have a lot of time to present, right? So summarize your draft is very important. Then number five, plan and prepare your visual aids. You have to plan, you have to prepare your visual aids. How to make, how to give animation, how to give um, like design of your slides. So this is, related to your PowerPoint, how to make it more attractive. So plan, which color should I use? If the color of Yamaguchi University is green, so let's choose the green color, something like that. So plan and prepare for that. And finally, practice your presentation and get its length right. So I always say, practice makes a man perfect. I repeat, practice makes a man perfect. So if you practice more and more, you will be perfect more and more. So this is kind of anything. If you a soccer player, if you practice regularly, then you will be more uh, effective player at the end of the day. And if you practice your presentation many, many times, you will be expert, you will be skillful of your presentation. So there is no alternate of practicing. So practice, practice, and practice. So practice makes a man perfect. So if you want to be perfect in presentation, you have to practice many times, not only five times, six times. You have to practice like 10 times, 20 times, something like that. Then number two, organizing the content. So when you organize the content, the first slide of your presentation will be your title page, title slide. What is that? The title of the presentation should be small in size. 
okay it should not be big two three lines okay no try to make it compact but full meaning people can understand what is the inside of your presentation by your first slide where you write the title then title should be all capital letters and big font size arial font okay this is important you cannot make small letters you have to have a big font size it means that when you sit in the behind you can understand what is the topic uh, what is the title of your presentation so you have to make big font size not a small font then write your name and affiliation clearly so your name and where you belongs to that is called affiliation so for example your name is a b c and your i am from uh or you university for example so this is the name and affiliation so you have to write your name full name if it is in english romaji or if it's Jama japanese you have to write in that way clearly then you can use photos or logos if you want so this is true to make it more attractive you can use those photos legos colors in the title page no problem at all now after making after showing the title page how to introduce yourself how to introduce your presentation so i am writing on example for all of you i hope you will take memo or like um, some screenshot of this, no problem. So introduction to an engineering presentation, effective presentation. So after showing the slide, title slide, the first slide of your presentation, you will just look at the audience, eye contact with them and then say, good morning, everyone. Or, Hello, everyone or if it is in the afternoon, you can say, good afternoon, everyone. Then you can say your name, your self-introduction. My name is Sato Keske. So I'm from the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering, Yamaguchi University. Okay, this is your self-introduction. Then you will give some general top talk to them, which is that, at first, I would like to thank all of you for attending to my presentation. I'm very happy to be here today. Today, I'm going to talk about my favorite sports, for example. So at the end of my presentation, you will come to know about soccer, which is my favorite sports. So something like this. At first, greetings then self-introduction, then topic introduction. So these three things you must have in the first slide presentation during the presentation. I repeat it again. Good morning, everyone. Hello, everyone. I am Azizul Moksud from the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering, Yamaguchi University. At first, I would like to thank all of you for attending to my presentation. I'm very happy to be here today. Today, I'm going to talk about my research about microbial fuel cell. So at the end of my presentation, you will come to know about the innovative way to get electricity from the microbial fuel cell. So this is the on general rules for effective presentation. So if you do not follow these rules, just start your presentation as it it will never be effective presentation be careful so these are the basic rules of effective presentation then you have to introduce the contents of your presentation and how to do that the red color text is you have to 
speak by your mouth. You do not write it. I just write for all of you to understand. Or if you want to take a screenshot or photo of this slide, you're welcome. Okay, so how to say that? In normally contents means or overview means what are the topic you are going to talk about in this presentation. So at how to do that, this table is that. First, I would like to talk about introduction. Second, I will tell you about the background. Next, I'm going to focus on methods. After that, I will show you the results. And finally, I'm going to discuss about conclusion. So the sequencer, first, second, next, then after that, finally, then intention, what you want to say, I would like to talk about, I will tell you about, I'm going to focus on, that intention. And finally, the action verb, like talk about, tell you about, focus on, look at, show you, discuss. So these are the way how to introduce your contents in effective presentation. Then what will be the body of your presentation? Number one, present your main points one by one in logical order, okay? Present your main points one by one in logical order. So it means that I say to become effective presentation, it must be logical in order, okay? First the interaction, then background, then objective, then materials and methods, then research, results, and finally conclusion. This is general rules for presentation for researchers or students. So, but what you have to do, you have to present your points one by one in logical order. So it will depends on your mind, your brain, same presentation, two students might prepare differently, but absolutely, it will depend on the way of thinking. Number two, make it clear when you move to another point. This is something very important in the results section. If you make clear, just make clear that I am moving to this point to another point, okay? Then number three, use clear examples to illustrate your points. Never forget to use the illustration like photos, movies, graphs, tables, pie charts, everything. Just give the illustration or especially when you write the experimental method or materials, it is always based to use the photo, direct photo then it is easy to understand what you're talking about. Number four, use visual aids to make it interesting. So you cannot make more interesting without using PowerPoint nowadays, okay? So absolutely you have to use it, no doubt about it. Here I give one example how I uh, present one graph related to peak voltage and the duration in our bioelectricity generation from small 10 centimeter cell, okay? So I just wanted to show here, there is a like heading of this, okay? It means that you can, easily read it and have an idea what they're going to talk about. What is the graph about? Where this voltage generation? Something like that, okay? Then conclusions. 
summarize the main points again using the phrases like so in conclusion okay on number two restate the purpose of your talk like my intention was this one and it should now be clear that uh, number three thank the audience and invite questions thank you any questions so this is the these are the conclusions for the presentation so i repeat it again summarize the main points and restate the purpose of your talk and number three thank the audience and invite questions so whenever you give presentation effective presentation or oral presentation there must be some question and answer time so the people who are listening they must have some questions on their minds they're gonna ask you what is this what does it mean how did you do that how it looked like that okay so prepare for that questions now delivering your presentation i repeat again talk to your audience don't read to them this is the most important all the presentation in this world good presentation they never read anything okay they just deliver it they just say it talk to your audience don't read to them a presentation is not the same as an essay speak to the audience i repeat it so you have to speak to the audience you cannot read the screen you cannot read the memo you cannot read your note nothing you just look at the people and just speak then maintaining eye contact okay this is part of body language so you must do that then let's see watch your language what does it mean it means when you do the when you check when you give the presentation try to make the language simple okay not so difficult complex sentence make it simple sentence easy to understand then check the pronunciation beforehand you must check the pronunciation earlier because uh, if it is in english or other language which is not your native you must have some difficulties in pronunciation of some words but nowadays you can check it in internet in google as well so just check it how to pronounce that and then use that pronunciation perfectly speak loudly enough for everyone in the room to hear you. The so presentation room is a big room. A lot of people sit there. So you have to speak loudly, clearly, so that everyone in that room can hear you properly. Okay, this is also very, very important. And you speak slowly and clearly when you talk when you speak you speak slowly and clearly so this is important when you begin a new point use a higher pitch and volume so when you start a new point about your topic then try to use your voice different okay higher pitch and volume okay then let's see body language during presentation stand straight and comfortably hold your head head up look around and make eye contact with people in the audience when you're talking to your friends you naturally use your hands your facial expressions and your body to add to your communication do it in your presentation as well and finally, don't turn your back on the audience. This is important very much. Stand straight and comfortably. What does it mean? So when you give the presentation, you will stand 
comfortably straight okay do not lean like this and do not lean like this do not think like this do not scratch like this so stand straight and comfortably just put your hand side then hold your head up okay don't down don't like this like this no just straight and look around look around and make eye contact like i said z or z eye contact first okay then you started your presentation and when you are talking to your friends you naturally use your hands your facial expression your body language add to the communication do it in presentation as well so when you naturally talk with other people or friends for example you use your hands do you know what happened yesterday? Something like this. So when you give presentation, use your hands, use your facial expressions. This is very important. And finally, don't turn your back on the audience. This is something very much important for the students. So when you give presentation, sometimes you want to show some like slide or something, you just turn back. Don't do that. Always look at the audience. Face should be in front of the people, not the, not your back. This is rude. This is bad, actually. Then interact with the audience. What does it mean? Be aware of how your audience is reacting, OK? So when you do presentation or when we, some people might feel that is boring, it's not interesting, I'm, I feel sleepy to hear this presentation. So you have to check these things and try to make them active, whether they are in good, still with you or not. So be aware of how your audience is reacting then check if the audience is still with you is it clear something like this is it clear do you understand what i said so just ask question whether they are still with you or not and sometimes you can ask some question to the audience to become very active if you do that be ready to get the discussion going after your presentation so after presentation, there must be some discussion, question and answer. So you have to prepare for that as well. Make some extra slides, the possible questions that might be asked by the examiners or other engineers. And number four, using visual aids. It is very helpful to use visual aids in your presentation particularly if your accent is different from your audience accent, it can help, be very helpful to them. See your keywords. Yeah, of course, I mentioned it earlier. So different people has different pronunciations around the world. So when you work together with them in the presentation room, so it must have uh, some difficulties, I must say. So you will use some keyword and help them to understand what you're talking about properly. So just write the keywords in your visual ears. They will make much easier to understand for the people who are listening. Then handouts. Handouts are a great idea. It is a good idea to include your references on a handout so that people can follow up on them later. So it is good idea to include your references on a handout. So when, from where did you get the information of your presentation? So just give reference for that. You could also include some follow-up questions for discussion. Yeah, you can do that. Some 
possible questions and they can ask you the answer to make it more connectivity this will make some connection stay connected with the researchers or your friends colleagues bosses then number five dealing with nervousness okay what is that so when you go to the presentation it is common that you'll be nervous especially if it's in the international conference a lot of people a lot of researchers from different parts of the world you must be some kind of nervous so how to overcome this nervousness number one tips is the smile smile if you smile then your brain will be relaxed and then your nervousness will be go down so smile is the number one tip for the presentation then treat your audience like friends okay those who are listening to your uh, friend i mean those who are listening just treat them they are your friends okay they are not big professors big researcher they are not a big short okay just consider them they are your buddy they are your friends if you feel that then you'll never be nervous i always do that then breathe deeply okay take a lot of oxygen inside your body breathe then it will reduce your tension reduce your nervousness follow these tips okay i am sure whenever you get nervous when you are tensed then always do this take breathe take oxygen by using your nose and exhale by your mouth if you do that your body will be refreshed your your body will get a lot of oxygen and then you'll feel calm down relax slow down slow down increase them when people are nervous they tend to get confused easily so slow down okay slow down when people are nervous they tend to get confused easily so if you are nervous then it will be dangerous i mean it will make mistake easily so giving an oral presentation is a performance you have to be like an actor. So when you give oral presentation, so this is kind of performance. So I say that, so practice makes a man perfect. The player, the soccer player who practice more than he played better in the, during the match. A baseball player who practice a lot during the practice session, he played better in the match. Same thing, okay? When you give presentation, oral presentation, effective presentation, you have to practice a lot, then you will be perfect. Okay, so this is our performance place. We are not playing, we are not singing, but we give presentation. This is our kind of performance. We have to act like this. And finally, there will be one question and answer session. So repeat that question and think the answer. If you cannot understand, then please ask him again. And after answering the question, ask the man whether it is okay or not. Sometimes when you try to say like, it is a very good question, uh, just praise the people who are asking you. So by this time you can think what is the answer should be. So if you do not know the answer, then please say, sorry, I do not know that right now. We can discuss it later. So these are the tips for question and answer. But honestly speaking, this is the most difficult part for any English presentation or international presentation or civil engineering presentation because you can have a lot of practice for your presentation. You can be perfect. Your skill will be very developed within a very short time. But if you do not read, 
if you do not study more, if you do not think more, you will never be able to give good question and answer. You cannot never be answer properly. So this is very important. And sometimes to start the question and answer time, you can say like, does anyone have any questions? Do you have any questions? Are there any questions? But I always like this one, the formal one. I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Okay, this is very, uh, I mean, polite and formal. You can use it in international conference in front of international engineers, in front of your bosses. Like, I would be happy to answer any questions you may have, like. So I already discussed about this point, but just to remind it again, during the body, uh, what will be the body language during the effective presentation? your posture, how will you stand, your gesture, your hand, head movement, hand movement, then eye contact, voice, tone, smile, that all makes this body language for effective presentation. Please remember these six points, your posture, your gesture, your hand movement, eye contact, voice, tone, and smile. These are the way of your body language during presentation. Watch your language. Keep it simple, okay? Emphasize the key. I think I already discussed this, but just to want to mention the number six, keywords are important. Speak them out slowly and loudly, okay? This is very important. Now, the final topic is Recently, due to the corona and other things, pandemic, people are talking about the online presentation. So here are some tips for online presentation. Slide should be same as like face-to-face -face presentation, but while he's speaking, look at the camera. Do not look at the slide, just look at the camera like this. Do not read, speak to the people. So many students are, I found in online, they just, do not practice much, just read. But people who are listening like me, I can understand who are reading, who are speaking, okay? Prepare the background, make it clean of your presentation room. So in your background, camera background, it should be clean and beautiful. It should not be messy or dirty. Make sure you will get enough light on your face. So if you do not get enough light, your face will be dark. So uh, the other side, people cannot see you properly. Make sure to focus your face, okay? Just focus your face. Use formal dress, use laser pointer, finish your presentation on time, use your own computer to present your slide, make sure whether your microphone is open or not, and check the sound system or video system. So. These are the things you have to consider. So that's all from my side. And this is one picture of my presentation in the Philadelphia in the USA. So I hope you will learn how to give effective presentation and Whenever you give next time presentation, wherever it is, international conference, in the university or in the job, always try to follow the things, follow the lessons which you have learned today. The most important thing is your practice, body language, and also your pronunciation and prepare your slides according to the rules of effective presentation.
okay that will be the most important thing 